Welcome to Bullet Point Nursing. My name is Dr. Goldstein. Let's get started. Today we are going to go through pulmonology and we're doing this at the nursing fundamentals level. So let's begin with an anatomy and physiology review. The upper airway consists of the oropharynx, the nasopharynx, and the larynx. That's the mouth, the nose, and the voice box. The lower airway begins just beneath that, and that begins with the trachea and continues through the bronchus, the bronchioles, and the alveoli. Ventilation is moving air in and out of the lungs. The primary muscle responsible for ventilation is the diaphragm. However, we also have intercostal muscles, which are the muscles between the ribs that also can help expand and contract the chest. The lungs are responsible for bringing oxygen into the body and expelling carbon dioxide out of the body. The reason we need to bring oxygen into the body is for the oxygen to make it to the cells. This requires a number of different components to be properly functioning for that to happen. First, the air around us must actually contain oxygen. Next, we must be able to bring that air into our body. That is what we just described as ventilation. Next, the air is now in our lungs. We need the oxygen in that air to diffuse into the bloodstream. Next, we need the blood to be able to hold on to or to carry the oxygen. This is done by red blood spell cells, specifically hemoglobin, which is an iron molecule. And then finally, we need the blood to be moving to carry it throughout the body. So if we do not have the cells getting enough oxygen, there are a number of different areas that we now can identify as being where the system could have broken down. It could be that the air we are breathing does not have oxygen, such as in a fire where when we're breathing in smoke, that air is not full of, of oxygen. It could be a problem with ventilation, bringing the air in where the lungs are simply not bringing enough air into the lungs. It could be a problem in the lungs where the oxygen that's in the lungs cannot diffuse into the bloodstream. A common issue with this would be something like pneumonia where there's an infection in the area where the oxygen needs to be diffusing into the bloodstream. Next, we have where the blood is not able to carry the oxygen, and that could be in something like iron deficiency anemia. And finally, if the blood is not pumping or if the patient is hypotensive as a low blood pressure, the blood is not moving throughout the body, it's not carrying that oxygen to the cells that need it. And our last point on our AMP review, there are five lobes in the lungs. Three are on the right and two are on the left. The reason we have two on the left is because we also have the heart on the left side and that takes up space. Let's move on to discuss pulmonary assessment. Hypoxia is a low oxygen level and this can be fatal. Signs and symptoms of hypoxia can be dyspnea, which is trouble breathing, tachypnea, which is breathing quickly, and then we have some later signs, such as altered mental status, tachycardia, and finally, cyanosis, where the patient starts to turn blue. When we assess a patient for pulmonary, we're going to assess their work of breathing. What this means is, do they seem to be putting effort into their breathing? And here are some ways to tell. If the patient is in a tripod position, this is where they are sitting or standing, leaning forward, trying to make it easier to breathe. Nasal flaring is another sign of trouble breathing. Two to, thir to three word dyspnea, where the patient can only get out a few words at a time because they need to keep breathing. And finally, accessory muscle use, where we see that the patient is using extra muscles in addition to their diaphragm to breathe. To assess lung sounds, a medical terminology point here, adventitious lung sounds are where we have abnormal or, net or bad sounding lung sounds, as opposed to normal would be considered either normal lung sounds or clear lung sounds. Please note when assessing lung sounds, you should always be assessing directly on the skin if at all possible. Okay, do this with consideration of patient privacy, 
However, patients will always understand that you want to do the best assessment, and that is done by putting the stethoscope directly on the skin. A few long sounds we're gonna talk about. Strider is mostly heard on inspiration, which is when we're pulling air into our lungs, and that is generally an upper airway issue. Wheezing is primarily a lower airway issue, and it's indicative of constriction. Strider is mostly indicative of an obstruction, of something obstructing their upper airway. Wheezing is indicative of constriction or a narrowing of the lower airways. Ronchi is also a sign of constriction, but in larger passages in the airways versus wheezing. However, it is still a lower airway issue. Crackles or rails may be heard in the lower airways when there is fluid in the lungs where there shouldn't be. Finally, lung sounds should be assessed in all lobes. Remember, we discussed there are five of them. They should be assessed upper and lower and anterior posterior, meaning you must assess lung sounds on the front of the chest and on the back. A stethoscope has two parts. It has a diaphragm and a bell. The diaphragm is what we use to assess lung sounds. Further in our, in our pulmonary assessment, we have pulse oximetry. And pulse oximetry is discussed in depth in a separate lecture that we have on vital signs. Next, we're going to look at respiratory rate, depth, and pattern. These are three separate characteristics of breathing that you will assess on your patient as part of your pulmonary assessment. You want to know how quick they're breathing. You want to know if they're breathing deeply or shallow. And you want to know the pattern of their breathing. Is it regular or is it abnormal? Shane Stokes is one specific abnormal respiratory pattern, and it's where the patient alternates between periods of apnea, which is not breathing, and periods of rapid respirations or tachypnea. It is associated with heart failure and stroke, and it is most common during sleep. Cusimal respirations are deep and rapid respirations essentially where the patient is moving as much air as they possibly can by breathing fast and by breathing deep. This is associated with acidosis and is commonly seen with DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis. Three other respiratory patterns, and these are also discussed in the vital signs lecture, are apnea, which is not breathing, bra uh, bradypnea, which is slow breathing, or tachypnea, which is fast breathing. Please note when you're assessing a patient's respiratory pattern, they must not be aware that you are assessing it or they will subconsciously alter their respiratory pattern. Finally, arterial blood gas is an advanced way to assess how well a patient's oxygenated. And this is discussed in depth in the med surge lecture. Oxygen administration is also discussed in a separate lecture. One point to make here, we discussed hypoxia and when a patient has too little oxygen. Let's talk about when a patient has too much oxygen. Yes, that can be a bad thing and it can lead to what's called oxygen toxicity. Signs and symptoms of this include chest pain, coughing, chest heaviness, and trouble breathing. It can also include CNS or neurological symptoms such as a headache and dizziness. We're gonna briefly mention here a few pulmonary diseases, and these will be discussed more in depth in the med surge section on pulmonology. Asthma is a disease that causes inflammation and constriction of the lower airways. If you could picture the diameter of a pipe, which is what our bronchus are, if you could picture that getting constricted, getting smaller, it becomes harder to move air through it. Now imagine on top of it getting smaller, it also becomes inflamed. That makes the inside diameter even smaller, and that is the problem with asthma. COPD is a disease of limited air movement and of lung tissue destruction. This is by far most commonly seen in relation to cigarette smokers or those exposed to cigarette smoke. Obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, is apnea that occurs during sleep and is usually related to an obstructive pathology. The major risk factors are being of older age, being male, and being obese. Pneumonia is an infection, most commonly bacterial, of one or more lobes of the lungs. Symptoms of this include a productive cough, fever, and trouble breathing. 
You'll recall from the beginning of this lecture where we mentioned that in pneumonia, the lungs are not able to easily work in terms of bringing air into the lungs and allowing that oxygen in that air to diffuse into the bloodstream where it needs to go. And finally, bronchitis is an infection which is most commonly viral of the bronchus. This is most commonly presenting with a cough. And as noted, since this is a viral infection, it does not need antibiotics because it is not a bacteria. Thank you for watching. Here are the references. Have a great day.